Judith from here at New Testament Explained. This video is going to run through some of the key implications of John's prologue. And again, this video is going to align with edXL A-level religious studies. We're going to focus on four implications of John's prologue. The implications for Christology, the Trinity, replacement theology, and the nature of belief. We'll start with Christology then. Christology is a branch of theology that is concerned with the nature of Jesus. Now, John's prologue offers a different Christology to the Synoptic Gospels. John offers what we call a high Christology, and this means an emphasis on Jesus' divinity. For example, in the prologue, we see terms such as the logos, the word, we get the idea that Jesus is the word made flesh, and we also get ideas concerning his pre-existence. Now, this differs to the Synoptic Gospels, where we see a low Christology. A low Christology is where you emphasise Jesus' humanity. We've seen this before in topic 1.1, when we studied Matthew's birth narrative. There we see an emphasis of Jesus as part of history uh, and his humanity is emphasised. Whilst John offers a high Christology compared to a low Christology in the Synoptic Gospels, I should make clear that a high Christology shouldn't be interpreted as superior or better. High and low Christologies are simply different points of emphasis. Next, we're going to look at the Trinity. The Trinity is a Christian belief that God is one God, but three co-eternal and consubstantial persons, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, the term Trinity is not used in John's prologue. However, the concept of the Trinity does appear to be introduced in John's prologue. John's prologue has served as a major source of, for the church doctrine of what we call the triune God. Tri meaning three, uni meaning one. Interestingly, in the early church, there were some major heresies concerning the Trinity. There was a belief that Jesus was born human, but became the son of God at his baptism. There was also a belief that the father existed before the son and then created the son. So Jesus was not seen as God. The second area that we're going to look at is replacement theology. John's prologue is considered an example of replacement theology. This is the idea that all that had been previously revealed to Moses in the Mosaic Covenant, commonly known as the Torah, had been fulfilled because the word, the Logos, had become flesh in Jesus. This means that Jesus, the new covenant, has replaced the Mosaic Covenant, the Torah. The impact of this can be seen in the early Christian community. For example, there were debates as to whether Jewish and Gentile Christians had to follow Jewish law in order to receive God's grace. For example, did a Gentile have to be circumcised? Paul supported the view that there wasn't any need for Gentiles to follow the Jewish law because Christ was now the grace from God as opposed to the law. Not only has this idea had an impact on the early Christian community, but replacement theology has also had an impact on ethical decisions more broadly, because replacement theology suggests that the teachings of the New Testament supersedes those of the Old Testament. The last area we're going to look at is the nature of belief. As I said in my video on belief as a key theme, it's much more than just having beliefs about Jesus. For example, that Jesus was the Messiah. It's about you putting your faith into Jesus. And as a consequence, John's prologue would argue, transforming into children of God. Now, Martin Buber referred to this as an I-U relationship rather than an I-it relationship. The impact 
of believing as a personal encounter has been seen across history. Martin Luther during the Protestant Reformation argues that faith was the only way to salvation. Evangelical Christians focus on personal encounters with Christ. An interesting area that arises in this debate is the importance of creeds, which are formal statements of belief. Now, for most Christians, believing in his name is not necessarily a rejection of creeds, and actually a creed can help you come to have faith. That then ends my video on the implications of John's prologue. Again, if you are studying Edexcel A-level religious studies, thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.